Faith for Today with Colin Urquhart and Julia Fisher. We've been taking a real in-depth look at what John had to say in his first epistle and realising just how contemporary it is to our situation, Colin. This relationship between faith, love and obedience, rather like a three-legged stool. You said on yesterday's programme that most Christians don't live by the standard of God's word. If we did, it would transform our nation. And John says in verse 9 of chapter 5 that we accept man's testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God, which he has given about his Son. Anyone who believes in the Son of God has this testimony in his heart. Anyone who does not believe God has made him out to be a liar because he has not believed the testimony God has given about his Son. Now, what is John saying? Here, we're now back in the faith realm. We're taking, we've seen how faith and love intertwined throughout this um, epistle. And he's saying, God has given us the testimony about who his son is and what he has done and accomplished through his son, through his life, by his spirit, through the shedding of his blood for us on the cross. So anyone who believes in the son has this testimony about Christ in his heart. And anyone who does not believe what God has said about his son is, in effect, calling God a liar. So, unbelief is not just something unfortunate. It's calling God a liar. It's saying that what he has said is not true, is not faithful, is not trustworthy. So you're either for him or against him. Absolutely. Those who are not with you are against you, Jesus said. So uh, to question God's word is to call God a liar. And there is so much of that that goes on in our modern day within the whole realm of the church that people choose what to believe and what not to believe and, and oh, I can't accept that and I don't want to believe this and that isn't for today and things have changed now and all this kind of, of stuff which is crazy really because Jesus said that heaven and earth will pass away but my words will never pass away. The word of God is eternal. The word of God is unchanging. The word of God is truth, and it is always the truth. So it is always for us individually and for the church corporately to bring our lives into line with God's word. And if we bring our lives into line with his word, then we will believe what he says, and we will do what he says that the faith will lead to obedience, just as the love leads to obedience. And then he says in verse 11, and this is the testimony, God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life, but he who does not have the Son of God does not have life eternal life, God's life, the life of God's Spirit. Now, this is very, very important, isn't it? Because we live in what is called a multi-faith society, surrounded by people that believe all kinds of different uh, religious dogmas. But the Word of God is very clear. To have God's life, eternal life, the life of his spirit, you have to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, not just a prophet, not just a good man, not just a teacher, not just someone who healed and performed miracles. He is the, God of Son, he is the Son of God. We have to believe the testimony that God has given about his Son as to who he is. 
And so then John says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. This, this is John's motive. He's, he's not writing this letter to harangue the people and to say, you know, you've got to obey, otherwise you don't love God, or you've got to believe, otherwise all kinds of negative consequences will result in your life. He's saying, look, my motive in writing this, my motive is imploring you to put the love of God into action the reason why I'm imploring you to trust God uh, and to, to lean in faith upon Jesus is because I want you to have that life. I want you to share, as he said right in the first chapter, I want you to share the fellowship with the Father and the Son that we have. And remember, fellowship is the sharing of life. So... What John is really saying is, I'm saying all these things to you because I want you to have the life that I have and that the other believers, the other apostles have. You know, these, these are the ones that saw and touched and knew the Son of God, the Word of God that had become life. Again, he says all that right at the beginning of, of this um, epistle, doesn't he? And now he's saying, look, I, I'm saying all this to you because I want you to have that life. He said, the life appeared. We have seen it and testified to it. And we proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and has appeared to us. He said, this is the life I want you to know. This is the life I want you to enjoy. This is the life I want you to experience every day of your lives. And the way to know that life and, and to experience that life and to be filled with that life is to obey the Lord by loving others as he has loved you. It's to put all your trust in the Lord, and if we quote Proverbs, and lean not on your own understanding. It, it's it's a, really an imploring to the people, live by faith and the obedience that comes from faith. Live in love and the obedience that comes from love, and you will have this life. God's life, eternal life. And when it comes to the day of accounting, when God will reward you according to what you have done, you will have a rich reward in heaven. Not because you've been saved by your works, salvation is a gift, but what reward will you have in heaven? That's the point. Salvation gets you to heaven, but what reward will you have in heaven? That all depends upon what you have done. And what John is saying throughout this epistle, that means that will depend upon the way you have loved others and the way you have believed in Jesus to be who he is. You can't really read this epistle without making the decision, do I believe or don't I? He leaves you in no doubt that the choice is yours. Well, the choice is always ours. I mean, faith is a choice. Love is a choice. You can't force someone to believe. You can't force someone to love. But there's no middle ground. There's no middle ground. Jesus commands us, you see, to believe, and he commands us to love, which means that we do have the ability to do both those things because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of love. Love is the first fruit of the Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is the spirit of faith. With this same spirit of faith, we believe and therefore speak, um, Paul says in the second letter to Corinthians. So if you are a Christian and you have therefore received the Holy Spirit, you have within you the capacity to love and therefore to obey God in whatever way he is telling you to love. And you have the spirit of faith which will enable you to believe and to trust God no matter what the situation, what the circumstances, what comes against you, what trials and tribulations there may be, what challenges, what times of testing you have to go through, or how good and easy and prosperous things are for seasons. And I think all of us know good seasons and challenging seasons. But the faith is to be constant and the love is to be constant irrespective of circumstances. And so we have to deny the negative. We will not judge. We will not condemn. We will always forgive. 
We will be merciful because our Father in heaven has always been merciful to us. We will be gracious to us because we live in the grace of God. We will love others because we're gripped and held in his love. We will we will trust him and not lean on our understanding because he is the faithful one. And he will lead us to the fulfillment of his plan and purpose for our lives. He will enable us to be what he calls us to be and to do what he asks us to do because we're not trusting on our own human love. We're not trusting on our own human resources, but we're trusting in him, in the power of his spirit that lives within us. Presumably, in order to live like this, we really have to appreciate what Jesus has done for us. Yes, and my book that is about to be published called um, The Great Revelation will help you to put this into practice because it focuses upon what it means for Christ to live in us. Um, you know, Christ in us, the hope of glory. And, and Paul said that uh, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. The life I now live I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You see, there's this common core throughout Scripture, whether you're listening to Peter, whether you listen to Paul, whether you're listening to John, they were all disciples of Jesus. Um, Paul, of course, after his resurrection, uh, Peter and John during his life here on earth. But they all know the same Lord and they all believe the same gospel. So they're all in accord with one another. You've been listening to Faith for Today, presented by Julia Fisher. This program is sponsored by Kingdom Faith. For further information, visit our website, kingdomfaith.com. 